<laughs> so we have questions for you from our viewers. I'll start sure. with the first. What are some habits you should hold on to post-pandemic? I believe strongly in this. You know, during this pandemic, we've all learned about infection control, and I think it's proved to be beneficial in terms of not only curbing COVID-19 outbreaks, but also in other infectious diseases. For example, I don't know about you guys, but I have not had a cold for a long yeah. time. And there are many reasons why. We've been washing our hands, we've been wearing masks when we don't feel well, and we've been avoiding people when we don't feel well. So all of these things we should probably continue when this pandemic is long gone. So we should keep avoiding people then? Uh, I'm, I'm maybe kidding. not avoiding people so <laughs> Sorry, much. I, I know. Been waiting for that. That was, yeah, that was, <laughs> that was a personal, personal statement. We'll unpack that later. Um, no, but we definitely should continue certain tactics. I wouldn't encourage avoiding people so much. But um, yeah, there's a reason why the flu and other viral infections are down, down incredibly low. But hugging is bad. Hugging is great. I love hugging. Yeah. She's, a, she's not a hugger. Oh, she's not a hugger. Okay. She's a, and she, there's an anti-hugging movement led by robots. That started before the pandemic. It's a whole yes. thing, man. Yes. Okay. All right. Uh, okay. Next question. When do we need a rabies shot? I love this topic because this falls right into my clinical purview. So what is rabies? So rabies is a viral infection that causes inflammation of the brain, and it's transmitted by infected animal scratches or bites. Uh, it often starts as a fever and tingling at the exposure site. That can progress to nausea and vomiting, and then that can progress to uh, confusion and seizures and ultimately death. Mm. It's incredibly rare, but it's very fatal in the United States. Um, and my uh, advice to decreasing the risk of rabies is number one, cleaning the wound, making sure that you clean your wound and your exposure site aggressively with soap and water, and then seek out medical attention um, and making sure that you tell the doctor about the exposure animal that the, the animal that you were exposed to. So then that can lead to a decision on whether or not you need a rabies vaccine series. And to answer the second part of this likely question, what animals uh, hold on to rabies, I'm going to pose it back to you guys. So there are certain animals that are high risk and there are certain animals that are low risk. So I'll start with an easy one. Bats. Do you think they're high risk or high low risk? risk? I would assume high, huh? High, correct. Two points for you. One point for each of you. What about skunks? I would assume high as well. High, yes. You can smell them a mile away, but if they get close, you should be really careful. What about raccoons? Yes. I'll say high as well. Oh, this is yeah. great. Fantastic. And then the last one, rats. Just huh, yes. yuck. Aren't they big disease no. spreaders? They're, not, they're disease spreaders, but not for rabies. Rats are low risk for rabies. They're at high so risk for getting anywhere four. near me. <laughs> 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 Everyone in the room had a collective sigh of relief finding out that rats don't right. carry rabies. Because it's New York. <laughs> 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 All right, Dr. Sutton, thank you as always. Keep the questions coming to Dr. Sutton on his Instagram at dr.darian. Well, hey there, GMA fans. Robin Roberts here. Thanks for checking out our YouTube channel. Lots of great stuff here. So go on, click the subscribe button right over, right over here to get more of awesome videos and content from GMA every day, anytime. We thank you for watching, and we'll see you in the morning on GMA.